Yeah. Well, it's after eight. We'll get started. Uh, we'll forego with all the other formalities. We'll get started on this uh, public transportation agreement. I had an opportunity to look at it. Um, I think Chad had added this section um, that was important for us. And um, that was down in section 14. And uh, so with that addition, I would go ahead and move to approve to enter into the uh, transportation agreement for the, the rural public transportation. To catch a ride on that. Yeah. I would second that. We'll pass. Uh, catch a ride. They're important to a lot of people, so we need to do what we can. And I think this is all new with NDOT. I don't know how NDOT really got involved in them, other than the fact they're using state roads to travel. I was going to say, I think it's because of the funding sources that they get. That they're, they've added this layer of oversight, and it's all brand new to this year. Is my understanding that they've never had to do this before. So that's kind of why everybody was caught unaware and um, we got to today. And I guess just so we're all aware, I did send my proposed changes through to the representatives yesterday afternoon. I did not get a response from them. Um, but I mean, I think the county's position is the added language is absolutely necessary and non negotiable. So passing that is appropriate. I agree, Chad. <clears throat> You need to get back in. into you. They need it today. today. Um, you know, it's the, the deadline to have them. The you grant say, them just today. tell them they can pick it up in the courthouse anytime yeah. before mm -hmm. four. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, Mandy. So I had I had received a call uh, or a message over the I guess last week, and I had messaged with Mandy, and she and I ended up having a phone call. And it kind of brought to light some additional or continuing issues, if you will, um, that we're seeing for the availability of animal control officers and issues within the county um, that are taking place. A lot of them down in Westport. Uh, this was again another call that I received um, down in Westport for dogs running loose. And so after the conversation Mindy and I had, uh, we decided to just go ahead and throw it on to this special session. Are you familiar with the agreement that Westport and the county had several years ago? No. When I first See, that was before my time. I've only been here uh, four years in this. Summer. Westport at one time, that current board told the county they were not to come to Westport. I did not know that. Is it documented anywhere? I don't know. Because uh, they, they created their own little dog pound. Oh, they even created their own little ordinance. And on. I can't enforce their ordinance, right? Correct. It's just like at about that same time as when they withdrew from county inspect building inspections, they were going to do their own little thing. And, uh, so I don't know how that stands today. I just want to add that because I know Jeremy probably never heard of that. I didn't know that. Yeah. And see, that's what I want is clarification. So I don't know. What is it that I need to do with these incorporated little towns and stuff? You know. Well, they have their own ordinance, which I didn't wasn't aware of that either. Then it's their problem. Yeah, they it's got their own cages and pens. If it's inside Westport, because limits. he told me that was the reason they had set up those dog pens out by behind their police department, is they were supposed to put those <clears throat> running at large animals in there, and then we were supposed to pick up from there. Yeah, they didn't want our because, and I don't know who the. I can't remember who, in your position at the time, what started that somebody was it shot. Was it Ashley or who? No, no, no. Uh, I think it might have been clear back to Mike Winnie. Oh, the animal control officer. Shot a dog inside the city limits of Westport, and that's what started this whole shebang. That, that was, was even Mike. before I was a commissioner, but that's where that ordinance started. 
that's why they, of course, at that time, those pins, I'm not sure, they were over behind the old town halls thing. Right. See, I wouldn't said from then on, the town there. marshal was to pick those dogs up and put them in those pens, and then the county's animal control guy would come and pick them up from there. They didn't want us running the streets away. And then saying that we're not coming out to the county, that is very untrue. Spent a lot of time last week, week before, out in Westport, but you know, we never go out there. Brian, I guess Brian would, uh, Gate would be the, who we need to contact to see how the, what, what their feelings are. They, they got a whole new board now and they may have changed. And, but there was, I'm pretty sure there was an ordinance written to that effect. Okay. And then, so he got a call that I didn't go out on the call. And it was election day, which was our day off. And it was right around eight o'clock. If you look in the packet here, I pulled that call. It was running at large. We don't do running at large. Can you just explain why you don't do running at large? It's just what it is. It's because if they can't catch it, how am I going to catch it? I mean, you know, and there's only one animal control officer. And, you know, what if you get other calls? I mean, well, so. If you're 30 minutes away. Where's the dog going to be? Right. Yeah. Well, and quite frankly, I don't have any right now, but I used to have two dogs. On my farm, they, they, my, everybody in our neighborhood's got dogs. I mean, how do you, I'm not going to call a, her or um, a neighbor's dog come over and they first moved in, he come over and dropped a load on my back deck. I wasn't happy about it. I just gave him a call. And they came cleaned up, make sure that the dog's never been back. So I guess they had a good talk with him. <laughs> We've got some good like, stories there. <laughs> <laughs> but dog in the end up at my house, miles, yes. two miles away. Yeah, the county people take care of it themselves. I yes. mean, if you got a dog out there bothering your livestock and your livelihood, just pop it. And there's really nothing you can do. And by state guidelines, there's really no running at large. So, um, oh, and then let's go back to, say, Friday, Wednesday night. So my phone started ringing at 11.22 p.m. And it rang constantly until like 11.31, till I finally answered it. So they would stop calling me back to back. Dispatch, wanting me to go out and pick up a dog because they had somebody stopped and they had a warrant. And I said, no. I said, you guys have the code, drop it off. That's what they have the code for. And because, you know, the, the on-call hours are between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. And it's to the point, and they'll call me on Sundays. They'll call me on Mondays, which are my Saturday and Sunday. And it's it's just stupid stuff. And, you know, um, my animal control officer, the only one that applied, he lives in Franklin. So he's an hour away. So he's not going to be able to, you know, take on-call stuff. And, you know, I made the agreement with council that I would do it for a year, do both jobs in order to get my second kennel tag. And I've held, I've held to that. Actually, I've done it for a year and a half. So I've been doing two jobs. And I'm just tired. I need to concentrate on my part of the job. Has it been like the standard practice for like in that kind of a situation where somebody stopped and they have a warrant, they're going to jail and they have an animal? Uh, has it been standard practice for the sheriff's department and police department to take that animal to your facility? That's what, yeah, that's what they're supposed to do after the on call hours are over. Did you talk at all with Erica out of dispatch about that? Because I mean, the person working may not have. Is she the one that complained? Not to me. I didn't know if you talked to her at all. No. Mm, no. So. Yeah, they may not know what the expectation is. No, I, mean, have, no, it's, I it's, have it's, sent this to them many times. Okay. Okay. So they know. There's always, I mean, there's always turnover, both in like right. dispatch and also with your road deputies or, or road officers. And in a lot of other counties, 
in those situations, they would be calling animal control. And right. uh, so it might be something where I don't know the officer that had made the stop. That See, I don't even know if it was city or county right. because the dispatcher yesterday, yesterday said it was city. And then I talked to Rob last night close to four and he said, I think it was in the county. Yeah. I'm assuming it was out on the interstate is what happened. And that's possible. So it, it might be worth a conversation to, to Erica, to the chief and to the sheriff just to kind of reiterate that policy because I mean, when new people come in, they're training either from a different county if they were a lateral move from a different department here or if they were fresh out of the academy or somebody just forgets. Um, it might be worth one of those things of just brushing up law enforcement uh, on what it is. I know I regularly have to do that in my other job. Okay. So, you know, so it might just be, I think it'd be beneficial for you to, to reach out to them and talk with them about that specific policy. Um, I don't know if there's been a difference historically in the past, if there's like a, an aggressive dog versus some, something that's meek and mild and you can easily handle. Um, I don't know if there's ever been a difference in uh, the response in those situations. And I mean, I have been known to go out after hours. I mean, like when Jonathan Hager decided to get smoked out here by Stoneberg's uh, trucking. And um, that was a hot mess. He had a mean dog in the car with him. They took him off to the hospital and, you know, we're down in this ditch and gas is running everywhere. We had to sedate that dog. It was so mean. It was like a hundred pound dog. Dragging it up that wet hill because Rob called me. So I know that when Rob calls me and says, hey, dear. So, you know, I went on out for him and that was 1030 or so at night. I mean, so there has been times that I will go after hour, but you know, it's just getting to the point that it's too much. Sure. Chad, you look like you were. Oh, I was just, I found the town of Westport's ordinance and I'm just reading through it, but I keep. There's something about they can't have more than six dogs in here. Well, I mean, it's actually like a 13 page comprehensive animal control ordinance, but I keep referring to an animal control manager. Is that within our department, or do you know, do they have a designated individual? I think they're probably referring to us. Well, because it's undefined. Um, animal Control Authority, they include you guys as well as a designated representative of the town of Westport or the Animal Control Board, including the Animal Control Manager and Animal Control Officer or Police Enforcement Officer. So I assume all those animal control are references to any, you, yeah. which does that make you Again, they don't define some of these terms, so I'm trying to distinguish because it seems like they do have several expectations in their ordinance of us, which I guess leads to the question of they contribute to our animal control in money. Like, do they make payment? Because if they're an incorporated city, they should either be paying us for this service or servicing themselves, I would think. Uh, I don't do budget stuff, but that, as I'm reading through this, it seems like they took the liberty of including our services into their city. That's not necessarily a norm. My understanding for funding is county council sets the budget and then the city of Greensburg pays half of that. Right. So, so we don't get it from any mill house and we don't get any of the small incorporated cities don't contribute um, because they have an ordinance. They have their own animal person. I'm not sure that their ordinance can Direct us what to do with our departments. You want me to talk to Ron? I mean, if you I want, I would watch her three times a week. That's fine. I was I was going to call him, or you could just talk to him. Yeah, I'll time. ask him. Okay. He'll be at our. We got fishing regular tomorrow morning, so he'll be there. But um, now, like neglect, I mean, we do have to go out to look for neglect and stuff like that. I mean, that definitely has to be done. Actually, I'm meeting the state vet Monday at 11:30. We're going to go out and look at three different properties. And two of them are in Newpoint, and one of them is that's not in Westport, though. So, two count cases on horse, horses. So, when I get back to a real computer, I will forward this ordinance around to everybody so they can at least see it. Um, and I'll just ask them what their expectations are or how they want to working so it's clear. 
And then my next question is, so there is online where the county does have a county ordinance, but I have been told from the get go that you guys do not follow this one and that you go by like the Board of Animal Health state guidelines for because of considering county being agricultural and that it's like a large animal out there pretty much. Because there isn't a leash law out in the county. See, people get so ticked, you know, when the dogs are running between their yards and stuff like that. There's not a leash law. I don't know what to tell you. And that's through the state, there isn't one. And I was told that by many deputies too. That the county doesn't have an ordinance that they follow. Well, I just want clarification on what I need to be following, and then I will be more than happy to enforce whatever you guys tell me to enforce. Well, if there's an ordinance, and that's an ordinance. If yeah. you need to change the ordinance, then we've got to look into that. So, uh, and that's fine. Then that's good, because then there's clarification there, and then mm -hmm. that'll help a lot. I was going to say, I tried to find it for you just go to I like have, where you looked up the city ones and I have to believe there is an ordinance because I know Tony had asked me about instituting a, a penalty and fine provision within our animal control ordinance to you know, attempt to recapture all the work and expense that we outlay. There is in there. It it's, is in there. Mm -hmm. OK, in our ordinance. Mm -hmm. OK. Yeah. Because um, that's one that I hadn't really looked at much before, um, but but I think his thought was, well, if it's there, why aren't we enforcing it? What's the point in having an ordinance? The thing is, you can make, I mean, you can find people, but they just look at you like, okay, and they yeah. don't pay it. Because then it comes down to whether or not the commissioners want to start pursuing enforcement actions to actually collect our fines and penalties. How do we how do we enforce it? It's not a property owner. Yeah. What's that? How do we enforce it? It's not a property owner. I and mean, then start getting see. judgments, recording judgment liens. Yeah. But it's, I mean that it's a cost benefit analysis of you know you're probably only cost likely to could collect about thirty percent of your judgments and how much cost of action you would spend to get the judgments. Um, it would become a fairly streamlined process after you know first dozen or so because then everything's prepared and it's just swapping out names but that's the reality of it is getting a judgment just make it a nice piece of paper to hang on the wall doesn't really turn it into money um, especially if they are non-property owners Do you collect your impoundment fees before you release or do you like write them a bill and give them their animal? No, or? normally in a perfect world, we would collect them, but we've just been so full lately. It's like this. Take them. And then you can't. Once, 
the thing that we had been doing when we were getting a lot of like strays in that had owners, I'd be like, listen, I'm going to waive your fines, but you're going to pay $30 to get a microchip. So then that way, if it ever comes back, then we can scan it and mm -hmm. we know. Then you're going to get fined is what I tell them. Because we're completely full of the Well, and I mean, if we're going to talk about amending the ordinance, maybe we include that as a provision to reduce the recidivism, which is, you know, first level penalty is microchipping at our cost and reimbursed by you when the animal leaves. And then that hopefully cuts down on their workload on the back end. And then we start second offenses, fine penalty. But if we think we need to take a crack at redoing a bunch of these provisions, then we can use it to benefit the program as well. Yeah, so. <coughs> and I did find microchips a lot cheaper than the home again, so. Is that something you can, once you have the equipment you can do on site, or do you still have to send them out for, okay. Oh, it's just yeah. But, and when it comes to the on-call, you know, I would like to myself personally get away from it. What do you think the viability is of having a second person on-call? Well, when we, when we advertise for a part-time one, we applied. They were. No, I'm fine. And Robert was the only one that applied for a full-time. So how long has he been with January. Seems to be pretty dependable. Be... Get so excited. <laughs> so, how do we? It's a tough job to fill, I'm sure it is. How do we fill the gap then? If we don't think that we can. I'm with you guys for so much guidance. Yeah, I know there are some members of council that think we shouldn't be doing on call at all. And the thing is, like, so then is the expect, sorry, the date. so is the expectation then that we're completely shifting it to law enforcement? Possibly. And when the shelter board has talked through that, um, we've got the truck with the cages and everything mm -hmm. in it. Is there a solution where, because it's been brought up that the city probably wouldn't want to transport animals in their vehicles specifically? Um, is there a solution where we could make the keys available to where if there was a transport need that they could pick up the truck and transport that way without hurting their vehicles potentially and it keeps the animal safer? I have a haul a dog and cleaner. <laughs> How do they have so many? I mean, you know, I would think that, you know, if, if you incentivize a little bit, they pay like $2.25 an hour to be on call and $175 to go out, which is no dealing with the bot, you know, that's higher. Right. But even like a $50 call out or some, you know, I mean, incentivize, you might get. I just think of my, you know, think of all of our jobs. It's like, are we, we get paid the same, we want to get paid the same amount to be on call from until eight o'clock at night every day. Well, and also, I don't think we could impose that expectations on a current kennel techs because that's not what they were hired in to do. And just knowing their personalities, I don't think that going out on calls would be something that they would be interested in. Okay. 
So this list is call outs. Those are runs. Yeah, those are like during the day. Okay, that's what I yeah. I said it is this. Actually, I want it to be time out, time back in. If you know yeah. what I mean. Yep. And yeah. And do you get called to like no houses? <laughs> Not very often, no. But we go, you know. I like Kristen's idea. I don't know if the council would. I I brought it up before too. Yeah. Um. Not anything formally, but um. That's when it came up. Why are we even on call anyway? Um, I think there's a need. For a number of reasons. Um, so I, I think it'd be worth looking into maybe restructuring. I don't know if we only pay them two whatever an hour. I mean, that does seem low. Um, but I think it would be, I think it would be de decent to try to restructure the on call to see if maybe we can get somebody else in. And if try to alleviate some of the stress. If you're talking about restructuring it, though, are you still wanting to uphold the 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., or are you thinking that it goes beyond? I would, I mean, personally, I would think we need to go past 8 p.m. Um, I know. After four, right? I mean, when it, it would start after, at four. Start yeah, at I, four would, I, I would think double that would I, Yeah, I think it needs to go after like 8 p.m. no matter however it is that you want to make that time uh, because I mean I know there's a lot of shenanigans that happen later at night. Yeah, 4 to midnight or 4 to 11 might get you better coverage especially summertime I mean you don't get dark at 10 or Money-wise, that's good. That's a, that's a good work it out for council. But you're paying Mindy overtime. You know, I mean, you get comp, a lot of comp hours and stuff, and then paying out. So I don't like. Financially, might be better if you can find the person. Yeah, because I'd much rather the comp time be spent on like fundraising or you know like. Like PR events or whatever, you know, if trying to market our animal. If we're going to extend the hours, education has to happen regardless about what they're called out for. Yes. But I think we would need to have an even stronger education effort <coughs> to define what yeah. they were being called out for. But then also, if you do get complaints about them not responding to something that you guys stand up for them and say, no, the definition is this, so. Yeah, yeah I agree. I, I, and I agree with the not responding to running at large. I mean, that's, it's why I wanted you to say that so that other people, because it is still recording up there, so that other people would understand sure. why you wouldn't be res responding to a running at large. And that's case. what we've explained to people in yeah. the public, just like with that Akita that was running around out there by the Walmart for about, what, six, eight months. Yeah. Dave Scheidler did not did end up keeping it. He caught it. So he's getting ready to get it fixed. And, but, you know, it'd be like, listen, if you guys can't catch it, how are we going to catch it? You know, well, it's winter time. It's an Akita. It's fine. It's bread for this one. <laughs> yeah, so. well, I, I agree with that. Um, I mean, we can, if we even have to, as far as the policy list specific right. types of calls that we would respond to. Yeah. Um, Mindy, if you would want to draft that, I, I would have no issue with looking at that and adopting that policy. So that we can expand 
if we can get somebody else so that we can expand our available hours and then we can have a limitation on what it is. But I would also, I mean, even just right now, I, I'd still go back and talk to Erica and both of your heads of the law enforcement agencies. And I mean, reach out, reach out to Westport, talk to Talkington, um, talk to Josh Coons um, up in St. Paul uh, so that they know what the expectation is and, and what they'll be working with. Yeah, and that's the thing, you know, I've always thought that, you know, I've had a really good working relationship with like Josh and Joe, and then all of a sudden it's just like all these complaints coming in from Westport. And I'm like, what have I done to you? I've always went out there. Well, Joe's been off. I mean, he's back now. Joe was off six or eight or nine months, I think. And Joe's the other fellow, Luke. Is a, I'm told, I'm not a Facebook person, but he's big on Facebook and wrote some really big blast that town just came up last night at a meeting down there. The town's proposing putting in pickleball courts over the tennis courts. And he put a blast out on Facebook, I guess, that why in the world would they ever think about putting pickleball courts when we need to? Spend a half million dollars growing our park. Where in the world's Westport going to get five hundred thousand dollars to grow the park? And I thought pickleball courts were kind of part of the park. So I'm not sure he's defending himself. What else you got? Grant information in there. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I did. Yeah. That's that sixty thousand dollar one. When we asked for eighteen five, and that's why I ended up with. That's fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, we've got the twenty seven thousand dollar one from Rachel Ray. Bribe somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a peach to work with. Okay, I've heard that. <laughs> you take my phone call before. But they know about okay. it. I just, That's just, where that, yeah, they're buying that van, that transport van. The grant is the And we'll have to talk about that so that we can put that into insurance. Last I heard that they were, they had it in the shop and they were getting it inspected and yeah. And then they were going to have it wrapped. But I told them to hold up. I needed to get them the County logo. I like mine better, but <laughs> I'll use that one. But yeah, because it, it'll it'll have best friends on it as well. But I mean, they're the one paying for it. Yeah. Well, I didn't, did you have a chance to go through, look through that insurance, any changes or anything about how much? You no, I mean, have any call. between you and I at the last meeting, I think we had questions that I had. Anything else, Mindy? I say talk with the council, uh, see if they're willing to do something and possibly restructuring some type of pay scale, and then see if we can get a second person in. Defining what your hours are that you want to cover uh, when you're looking for somebody. And if you get that far, then we can talk about. Um, some type of policy that would be defining your funds that you'd be going through. In general, not just on call, but in general. And then we can reconvene at some point after you talk with Brian and see what their expectations or your thoughts are. Anyway. Yeah. 